Well, good morning. This is Barry O'Dell with the Church of Christ at Mem Spring Facebook page. It is Monday morning, August 2nd, 2021. And uh, starting a new study today. We're back to our live streaming. I uh, was out of town last week doing a meeting and didn't do any live streaming last week, obviously, but uh, we're back and looking forward to getting this study of the book of Acts going. As always, if you have any questions or comments during the video, please feel free to use the comment section and I will acknowledge them when I see them. Good morning, Gail. Good morning, Lyle. Thank you. Welcome back. I guess welcome back to you, too, since we didn't do anything at all last week. Also streaming on the Near Churches page, and if you're on there, as always, if you have any questions on there, use the comment section. Good morning, Diana and Linda. Good to see you guys on here today. All right, the book of Acts. The reason why I'm doing this is I'm getting ready to start an online course with the Northwest Florida School of Biblical Studies on the book of Acts. And uh, obviously, I just said online. I'll be teaching it online. It'll be a different format than this, but so I'm going to do Acts here publicly, and that's going to be a private thing, but I can't do any more. I can't teach any more subjects that I'm already doing. I'd be, I'd, I'd, I would be stretching myself too thin, and I certainly don't want to do that. Good morning. Let's see here. Connie and the Owsleys and Danny Napier. Good to see you on here today. So anyway, that's what we're doing, the book of Acts. And I've got a couple recommended books. Um, you know, the longer I study and the more I teach, I, I get... I get further away from books, but uh, there are a couple that I like that have been helpful to me, and if you would like to know what they are, I will be happy to share that information with you. Good morning, Debbie. Good to see you on here. So you're starting to study Acts on Wednesday evenings. Okay, Connie. Well, sorry. <laughs> I guess this is going to be doubled up on you, but uh, this is what we're going to do. Today, all I want to do today is um, just introduce the book, get a couple things down, and get us prepared for chapter one. Hey, good morning, Joe. Good to see you. The book of Acts is written by Luke, and the reason we know that is when you open up Acts, the author talks about the former, he says, uh, the former account I made, O Theophilus. Well, when you read Luke chapter one, and the first four verses there, I'm just turning my Bible back there real quick. It says, uh, uh, Luke chapter 1 and verse 3, he addresses Theophilus, and uh, he wants he wants Theo Theophilus to be certain, to be, to be confirmed in the things that he had already learned. And so Luke wrote Acts, and it's interesting when, when Luke ends, where Luke ends in, the, the account of, in his account of the life of Christ, the book of Acts picks right up. There's, you know, you don't miss a, you don't miss a second in the events that, that follow the death, burial, and resurrection. You come to the ascension in Luke 24, you open to Acts 1, and here we are again. And so I've got a couple things I want to share with you here about the book of Acts. Just a couple of points to, to have in mind as we study this book. Number one, I've got these typed out here, so I'm reading. Acts furnishes the testimony of those who are personal witnesses of the life of Christ. And so we see that throughout the gospel accounts, obviously. Many eyewitnesses to Jesus Christ. Uh, we, can, we can see how they fearlessly bore witness and preached the gospel during the first 30 years or so after the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. And that's the approximate, uh, that's the approximate timeline of the book of Acts. Of course, you have the ascension right there in chapter 1, and then you have Paul under house arrest in Rome, which, you know, most people agree would be early to mid-60s. So we're looking at approximately 30 years of New Testament history here in the book of Acts. Number two, Acts gives us an understanding about the church, its beginning, how to become a member, its organization, its mission and work, its growth, its reaction to persecution. And, and not only, I would say, not only the church as a whole, as, you know, various located bodies like in Jerusalem and Corinth and Ephesus and so on, all these churches that we actually read about when and how they were established, but among individual Christians too and their behavior in the world at that time. So it's a history book that 
recorded by inspiration directs us today as congregations of the Lord's people in the world and also as individual Christians who are who are trying to do our very best to live faithfully to God uh, in this present world, as Paul says in Galatians chapter 1 and verse 4. Thirdly, Acts reveals the work of the Holy Spirit in the scheme of redemption. Some people have actually called the book of Acts the gospel of the Holy Spirit because he is he and his work is is mentioned repeatedly throughout the book of Acts. I mean, starting in chapter 1, we have the mentioning of the Holy Spirit and his work. So it really clarifies that subject quite a bit. There is, hey, Barry and Glenda, good to see you this morning. There is a lot of, what's the best word, misinformation, I would say, about the Holy Spirit. And I would say, perhaps, if we knew the book of Acts a little better, we would do away with, do away with a lot of that ignorance. It shows how the apostles were baptized with the Holy Spirit and later imparted miraculous gifts through the laying on of their hands. It shows how that through the preaching of the inspired word, men were convicted of their sins and converted to the Lord. And so that the book of Acts records for us the historical accounts of the process of conversion. And well, the, if it records it for us and shows us what people heard, what they were taught, and then what they did in response to that teaching, now either positively or negatively, we we can learn from that, and we can do the same things that they did in a sense. We can preach the same message and uh, see the same results, because the results were some people rejected it and some people obeyed it, and we see those same results in the world today. Number four, Acts provides the record of what sinners were told to do to be saved, and so we have all of those specifics. The small, The same details are not repeated each time Inspiration describes the different cases of conversion, but by comparing the details that are specified, one can thereby conclude the full message that must have been preached to all sinners. So, for by way of example, there is a couple of times in the book of Acts, one, one that immediately comes to my mind is Acts chapter 8 and verse 5. It says, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. That's all we're told that Philip preached. He preached Christ to them. We're given a little more detail in Acts 8 and verse 12. It says he preached the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. But it's not like we're given there in Acts chapter 8 a full account of his material like we are in Acts chapter 2 with what Peter preached on Pentecost. We're told here's what he did, and then we're told here were the results of that. Both men and women were baptized. So you, you look at the totality of the book of Acts in the sense of conversion of what those people did, and you learn what, what people need to do today in order to be saved. Good morning, Brian. Good to see you on here today. So that's number four. Number five, Acts supplies the historical setting for most of the other books of the New Testament and thereby gives insight into a proper understanding of their messages. So saying that the book of Acts sets the context for the book of Corinthians. Uh, Acts what is that? Acts 18, when Paul went to Corinth. It sets the context for the book of Ephesus, because in Acts 19, he goes to Ephesus, and the church is established there. And then Acts chapter 20, he addresses the elders at the church at Ephesus. Uh, Acts 16, you have the establishment of the church in Philippi. Well, that sets the historical context for the, for the book of Philippians. So it's kind of, in a sense, the rest of the New Testament is kind of umbrellaed, if you will, by the book of Acts. Okay, Acts 17, Paul goes to Thessalonica. You've got First and Second Thessalonians. So it's good to know that Acts is not just a singular, singular unit that's not connected to anything else. It gives us much of the, of the historical context in the sense of conversions and then the sense of the establishment of churches. And then we go to those individual books and read about them. Like just for instance, Acts 17, we know that when Paul went to Thessalonica, he was, uh, it, it was in a, well, he had to deal with persecution. Well, then you read First and Second Thessalonians, and he talks about that, what he endured when he went there. So it's, it's all connected, and it's good to, to view the book of Acts as kind of that umbrella in the sense of, here's the history of the establishment of these churches. Here, here maybe are some individuals who were involved in the establishment of these churches, and then you see where they are years later when, when Paul would write them letters uh, after he had already been there, you know, however many years.
prior to the writing of that letter. All of that may have been a little wordy, but you get what I'm saying. It's, it's good to know the book of Acts so you can ap- appreciate the rest of the books of the New Testament. Now, here's another thing, too, that we need to understand. Not every... So you have all the letters, okay, starting with the book of Romans, First and Second Corinthians, Galatians, so on through the rest of the New Testament. We don't have the account of the establishment of every one of those congregations. And then, of course, you have the the seven churches of Asia that are addressed in the book of Revelation. For instance, we don't know, and the book of Acts doesn't necessarily record when the church of Christ in Rome was established or who, in fact, even established it. But when you get to the book of Romans, it's obviously a well-established and for some time established congregation of the Lord's people. So just, just some further information there for you. So one of the things that I've got in here is, like I said, when you look at Acts chapter 1, the first three verses, and you compare it with Luke chapter 1 and the first four verses, we learn the authorship of the book. Um, so just, and I'm, we're not going to get into chapter 1 today, but just looking at the first three verses there, he talks about the former account of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. And of course, that's what the Gospels do. Luke does that same thing. It records the actions of Christ and the teachings of Christ. And then he, he specifies the time period until the day in which he was taken up. Well, again, that's where Luke 24 drops off. He was taken up from among them. And that's where the book of Acts picks up that he is now, that Luke is now writing to Theophilus um, about the things that would follow and um, things pertaining to the kingdom of God, as Acts chapter 1 and verse 3 says. What's always been so interesting to me about these two books is, is that we're told that's why Acts was written. But when you go back to Luke's account, why the gospel of Luke was written, I'm just going to read the first four verses here. Inasmuch as many have taken in hand to set in order a narrative of those things which have been fulfilled among us. Luke is telling us that there were a lot of writers in the first century. And he says many. They took it upon themselves to write. And uh, he says, just as, just as those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word delivered them to us. So these things that were being written by a lot of people were obviously being circulated among people. Hey, Derek and Tammy and Braden, good to see you guys here this morning. Well, it seemed good to me also. And and what Luke does here is important to understand. Luke 1, 3, it seemed good to me also having had perfect understanding. Well, Luke's inspired by the Holy Spirit. Not everyone who wrote an account about the life of Christ um, is... A uh, was an inspired writer, an, ins- an inspired accountant, if you will, of the life of Christ. They may have been eyewitnesses, but there were only a few who were inspired by the Holy Spirit to write. To write to you an orderly account, most, most excellent Theophilus, that you may know the certainty of those things in which you were instructed. Um, the certainty of those things in which you were instructed. That word certainty means firmness or the, the confirmation of those things that you have believed. Luke was writing to, to I guess I would say, further develop the faith that, that Theophilus had in the life and activities of Jesus Christ. Well, that's exactly what the book of Acts does, but it does it not with the life of Christ, but with the, the establishment and growth and work of the church in the first century in the Roman Empire. So while Luke writes these two accounts, they're of two different things. And they're orderly, and they are uh, inspired by the Holy Spirit. And that's, of course, the most important thing to understand. So there's a couple ways you can divide the book of Acts, and this is where we'll finish up today, and we'll get started, Lord willing, tomorrow in Acts chapter 1. You can, you can divide Acts. I've got two different ways here in my material. You can divide it by the spread of the gospel. So the first seven chapters, Acts 1 through 7, the gospel's in Jerusalem. Acts chapters 8 through 12, the gospel goes a little bit north to Samaria and Damascus. And then Acts chapters 13 through 28, it continues to go north up to Antioch, up into Asia Minor, and then all the way across to Rome. So Acts 1 through 7, Acts 8 through 12, Acts 13 through 28. Or you can divide it like this. 
Acts chapters 1 through 9, the gospel is preached among the Jewish people. And then beginning in Acts 10 with, the, with Cornelius and his household, Acts 10 through 28, the gospel is preached among the Gentiles. Now that's not exclusive because Acts chapters 10 through 28, it does include accounts of the gospel preached, being preached to Jewish people, obviously. But the emphasis shifts from just the Jews, it seems, now to the, to the Gentiles, that door being opened with Cornelius and the dealings that Peter had with that Gentile household. Um, and that's the book of Acts. I mean, that's again, that's a brief introduction and kind of an overview of the book of Acts. But not every apostle, well, beyond chapter 1, Okay, in Acts chapter 1, all of the apostles are listed there. You have the selection of Matthias who took Judas's place. But after Acts chapter 1, you've got mainly, you've got Peter, um, you've got James, you've got John mentioned a few times, and of course Paul, Paul takes up most of the book. But most of your other apostles are not mentioned and their works in the book of Acts. And so it's the, the name I've said before that the book of Acts could really be called some of the acts of some of the apostles. Because it doesn't record, just like John's gospel tells us of Jesus, that not everything that he did was written. Well, not everything that the apostles did was written down in the book of Acts. It's some of the acts of some of the apostles in the first century. So I'm looking forward to this study. And again, as always, I, so I'm, I'm, I've got like 35, a 35 page outline here that I put together some years ago for the book of Acts. So since I'm teaching this class online for for the Northwest School of Florida School of Biblical Studies and now I'm doing it here, I'm going back through that material, I'm editing it, making sure everything's in line and I'm not done, obviously. So if you would like a copy of that material, I'll be happy to send it to you, but I'm not going to send it to you piece by piece. I'm going to I'll send it to you once I get it fully edited. Um proofread it again because I've not looked over it in some time. And if you want it, I'll be happy to send it to you. Just give me, you know, be patient with me. Give me a little time and I'll get all that cleaned up and um, I'll be, I'll be happy to send it to you. All right, guys. Well, good to see everybody here. Good to be back. What is it? Back in the saddle again, I guess. Um, had a good meeting last week in Middle Tennessee, but it's good to be back here at home, good to be back to work, good to worship with my family here yesterday at Mammoth Spring. All right, guys, we'll wrap it up today. I hope to see you back here tomorrow at 11 o'clock. And uh, if you want to read ahead, read Acts chapter 1. It's not that long. It's only 25, 26 verses, something like that. And uh, hey, check it out, guys. If you're still on here, Guyton Montgomery just shared a link to this class. You can sign up for free. <laughs> Sorry for the shameless plug, Barry. Hey, that's all right, Guyton. No problem. But let me tell you, the while I preached at Leonard Street in Pensacola, I got hooked up with this congregation, I don't know, what, five miles across town, and they, they oversee this work there. It's the Milestone Church of Christ, and they oversee the Northwest Florida School of Biblical Studies, and um, they do a good job. They have a show every Tuesday, Guyton, I think it's every Tuesday night that starts at 6.30. And it's usually Guyton Montgomery, Ray Graham, um, Troy Spradlin, Jeff Orr. There's usually four or five guys in there. And they have an excellent show every Tuesday night at 6.30 Central Time. I always try to share it. When I see it going live, I always try to share it on our public Facebook page because it's just an excellent program. So uh, follow the link that Guyton shared here in our comment section, and you can learn more about it. And as he says, you can sign up for free classes at the Northwest Florida School of Biblical Studies. It would be well worth your time. So there's your shameless plug right there, Guyton. <laughs> All right, guys, listen, have a good day, and I hope to see you back here tomorrow at 11 o'clock, and we will study Acts chapter 1 together. <laughs>